Give me some elders up here, staff. Let's pray for this offering. Amen. I believe with Chuck it's a debt canceling. I believe if God can cancel your debt of sin, come on somebody. I believe if he can cancel spiritual debt, he can sure enough deal with the physical debt. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak the blessing of God over these tithes and offerings, over everyone that give it this morning. We command the blessings of Jehovah God, our provider, to flow into every home, every business, every household. Father, you said a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children's children. We speak that over Covenant Connections Church and our covenant partners in Jesus' name. I cancel every debt of, 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 of any kind of poverty and lack. Any kind. We cancel it in Jesus' name. We command the enemy to flee and take his troubles with him. Everyone watch, watching by live church, we cancel their debt in the name of Jesus. As we give faithfully unto you, we trust you, not man. Not man's economy, but God's economy. I speak household salvation to these people's homes. No sickness or disease will touch their body, and everything they touch shall prosper and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe it, give him a shout of praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn in your Bibles to Malachi chapter 3. And, and ushers, get at the back door real quick so nobody can leave when you say Malachi chapter 3. I thought about that when, uh, when, when the Lord had directed me to Malachi chapter 3. I thought, now Lord, when I mention them to turn to Malachi 3, we're going to lose a lot of people. Because anytime we hear of Malachi chapter 3, we think of tithes and offerings. Amen? Very familiar passage of scripture where it talks about God rebuking the children of Israel. At this time, the children of Israel were in exile. They were away from their homes, their families. They were... And slavery and poor and broke. They were in exile. The reason they were in exile is because their forefathers turned their backs on Jehovah God. Began to serve other gods. Stopped doing what they were supposed to be doing. You know, I heard a man one time. It, it really made me mad. I was watching this live stream deal. and uh, It was... Well, I mean, I'll go ahead and tell you. It was... When uh, Mark, who's our the president uh, or the uh, uh, whatever you call it, I don't even know what you call it. There you go, Covenant Life School of Ministry, our Bible college here. He's the the dean over that and runs that. He had a debate with an atheist guy, and the question was something to the effect that if there's not a God, but if there was a God, and you stood before God. And didn't believe in him. As a matter of fact, this guy used to be a Baptist preacher. And he, he turned his back on God and all this. And the question was, when you stand before God, if there was a God, and you stood before him, what would you say to it? And he went on and on about how he would say, if you're a loving God, you know, I lived more moral than most Christians. I did more for the community than most Christians. I did this and I did that. And so if you're a loving God and a forgiving God, then you've got to love me and forgive me and see that I live better than most people and let me in. And the crowd goes wild. And I'm sitting there in my living room shaking I'm so mad. Because I thought to myself, here's a grown man that's leading thousands of people out of the church to not believe in a God anymore. And the excuse that he used sound like my eight-year-old daughter, who if I tell her, don't go play in the street, don't do drugs, don't drink alcohol, 
that she would come to me after playing in the street, doing drugs and drinking alcohol and saying, but daddy, I did it better than most. And I did it with all my heart. And at least I didn't kill somebody. At least I didn't shoot somebody. So you shouldn't punish me. There shouldn't be any consequence. That's the same way that an eight-year-old, and this grown man in the crowd goes wild, all college students. Go crazy. That's the way the children of Israel were living. They separated themselves from the things of God, the traditions that God had put in place, and then they were in exile. We know this scripture because God's calling them back to Him. See, we do serve a loving God. We serve a God that is forgiving, but we serve a God that's a God of justice. You might say justice. He has to be just. You might say amen. He's calling for his people to come back to him. And one of the ways that they forsook him was their tithes and offerings. Their giving. It wasn't about the money, but it was about their trust in God being their provider. It was about putting him first and not the things of the world. But that's not where this scripture stops. I was reading this chapter this week as, as a chapter that I read, uh, try to read every day during the week just as personal discipleship. And I run across starting in about verse 13 that, and found out that finances were not the only way that they forsook God. Trust was not the only way they forsook God. The verse 13 of chapter 3 in the book of Malachi God says to him, he says, your words have been stout against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against you? You have said, it is vain to serve God. My Lord. And what profit is it? That we have kept his ordinances. And that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. Mournfully, uh, worshipfully, or, or yielding our will to this God. He says, and now we call the proud happy. Yes, they that work wickedness are set up, or means that the things that they do seemingly are blessed and that they are founded and they do wickedness. Watch what they say. Yes, they that tempt God are even delivered. They say, why should we serve God? Why do we put our will down to, to, to His will? Why, why? It's just vain to serve this God. And watch what happens. Verse 16, the Bible says, And they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as man spares his own son that serves him. Then shall you return. Mm -hmm. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not. This is not right here. Well, yeah. Boy, I got so much for you, I just can't get ahead of myself. I, I want to speak from the subject this morning. Is your name in the book? Father, we bless you. Woo, hallelujah. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your word. Set your people free. Use me this morning to speak to those that are in our church that are watching by live church this morning and those that will be watching by television. Father, I ask you to use me as your servant. Use me today as your mouthpiece in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. So the children of Israel were in exile. They were 
away from God and God was trying to get them to come back and he talked about different things that they had rebelled against him and I want to focus on this one thing because you know oftentimes we speak of finances and and how we're, we're to serve God with our finances. Do you know the Bible talks about serving the Lord your God, loving the Lord your God with all your heart Huh? your spirit, your heart, so serve him spiritually, your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, so your will has to be put under his will, your heart, soul, your strength, that means the things that's in your power, and your mind, that means the things that you think. So we're to serve God spiritually, we're to serve God with our will, we're to serve God with the things we're in control of, which would include finances and stuff like that, and we're to serve Him with every part of our being. Now, there's often times when we don't, and if you are a a new Christian and and you're just on this journey, let me go ahead and tell you, you're going to fail Him. There's going to be things you commit to Him that you won't last an hour, and you're going to do it again. Does that mean you should stop setting goals and stop making commitments to God? No, that's not what that means. That means you repent, turn away, get refocused, and go right back after it. And if you fall 70 times 7 a day, God is faithful and just to forgive you. But you should still try to live right. You should still try to be kind one to another. You should still try to not beat up people that spill beer on your wives at the Braves game. And all that, you should try. Sometimes you'll fail. But God is a God that will always keep coming after you. Now, that, not let, before I ever get in my message, let me go ahead and preface by saying the book of Malachi is not just about judgment and It's about a loving God trying to get his people to come back. You cannot outrun the outstretched arms of Jehovah God. You cannot fail too much. I feel like preaching today. You cannot fail too much where God's not going to sit back and go, well, I'm just going to just turn them over. I'm just done with them. That's the way people are, not the way God is. He is faithful and just to come find you. And that's what he's trying to do in Malachi. He's trying to use the prophet to call the people back. So as I preach to you this morning, I feel like a prophet coming to you. Don't get mad at me. Just hear what I'm saying. God's trying to call covenant connections up to a closer relationship with him. Somebody say amen. So he's calling them back and he He calls them back in different ways. And then he looks at them to to bring this book to a close. He looks at them and he says, you know, some of y'all have been faithful in different things that I mentioned. But some of you have been harsh with your words, stout with your words against me. And they said, well, what have we said against you? See, sometimes we say things in our heart and we don't think God hears us. The Bible says he understands your thoughts are far off. He said, your words have been stout against me. Well, what have we said? He said, number one, you said it's vain to serve God. wonder how many of us, just in the last few weeks, have thought in our minds, what good is it for me to serve God? I've been going to church once a month. I read my Bible last Tuesday. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I prayed over my breakfast. What? And it ain't doing me no good. Now what about those that you, you're in church, you're in ministry, you, you're reading your words, you're praying, you spend time with God, you, you, you're involved in ministry, and it seems like it still isn't working for you. Boy, I heard crickets. It got awful quiet when you preach to Christian folks. I've learned that sinners will amen you before Christians when you really get down where they at. Maybe I'm the only one then. Let me just bring it to me. Forget y'all. I'm the only one. Let me just tell you this life of David. 
Sometimes I do everything I can do. Believe God. Speak those things that be not as though they are. Quote scripture and quote preachers and prophesy and spend time with God and, and just know that this is going to happen and it doesn't. And everything in me wants to go, why do you do that? Why do you make the sacrifices and, not, and God still don't show up? Boy, I feel like a man on a lonely island. I feel like Gilligan. Y'all don't know nothing about no Gilligan. Amen. I feel like Gilligan lost on the island. Have you ever been there? Can we be honest this morning? All the people that don't go to church and sinners and living like hell being blessed. Businesses blessed. Life blessed. Children blessed. Families blessed. Buying new houses. Buying new cars. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poor. And it seems like all the poor people in church. And that's why. Somebody say glory. Well, I hit something right there. didn't even know it. And that's the way they were saying, they were saying, everybody, all the wicked's being raised up and us Christian folks are suffering. And it's vain to serve God. It's vain to serve God. And I'm coming to get you this morning because I, well, you want to sit there and lie about it or not. I know by the Spirit of God a lot of y'all in here are at that place. And you've been questioning God. You've been saying, God, now I believed you for this and it didn't work. We got a lot of us can, can draw a conclusion or come together on, on Miss Monica Leonard who's sitting in the hospital in Philadelphia right now who we all believed and had a walk for Miss Monica and be healed and all this stuff and she still got cancer. She's laying up in the hospital trying to do more surgery and I got to talk to her on the phone the other night and went in to do surgery and guess what? They couldn't get to the artery so they couldn't stop the tumor so they got a procedure tomorrow and boy as I talked to her I, I was mad when I called her. I'm going to be honest with you. I saw it on Facebook and got mad. Here we prayed and fasted and where two or three are gathered in my name and where two or three agree on earth touching any one thing and it shall be done. We prayed and fasted and still got cancer. And I ain't as holy as y'all. And I look at God and I say, now we got a problem. Because I give my whole life to preach your gospel. And here we've been laying hands on her now, and there she laid up. You, you better talk to me now. And I talked to her and she's laying there and she said, yeah, but they're going to do another procedure and we just gonna, I'm just going to believe God it's going to work. And the Lord rebuked me through her. He said, you ain't even the one got the cancer. And she got more faith than you do. <laughs> Little sissy. Hey Amen. We, we got that sports mentality. We think if we don't hit a home run every time, we might as well throw the bat down and walk over, sit down, and don't even put me in no more, coach. I, I ain't going to hit no home. Well, every now and again, you got to bunt. And every now and again, you got to get a little base hit, walk every now and then. But it's all part of the game. And I come to tell you, you're going to score. You're going to cross that plate. God's plan for you is going to come to fruition. Don't give up. Somebody say amen. They said it's vain to serve God and all the wicked people. But they was a group. Oh, Lord. There was a group in verse 16. The Bible said, categorized them by saying they feared God. That word does not mean to be afraid. It means to reverence, to trust, and to believe. And the Bible says that they oftentimes spoke to one another. Good God, I'll get to that in a minute. And as they would speak to each other, they would encourage each other. And they'd say, don't look to the right or to the left. Don't get over there with that crowd and start believing what they believe in. That there is no God and that, 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 that speaking in faith don't work and that quoting God's word doesn't work. Don't get over there and believe in them. Let's stay right here. And they would encourage each other. Keep believing. God is faithful. Keep believing. God is faithful. And they started believing God so much that something in heaven changed. Now, I know some of y'all are good prayer warriors, but it's one thing for something on earth to change, but it's a whole other ball game when you get so in God's face 
that things in heaven begin to change. And you say, oh, but we ain't got the power to do that. Well, let me just reckon to the Bible just for a minute. Because the Bible says, whatsoever things you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Good God Almighty. Whatsoever things you loose on earth shall be loosed or shall be changed in heaven. See, we have got the power of God on earth to change things on earth and they be changed in heaven. Y'all ain't saying nothing this morning. The Bible says that as they begin to coerce and, and conversate with each other, converse with each other, that something changed. That God said, I'm going to create a book. And I'm going to create a book of remembrance. And all these people that are staying faithful to me and believing in me, I'm going to begin to write their names down in this book. And I'm going to begin to write a book of remembrance, not of the Christians that are weak-kneed and, and, and limp-wristed, Come on, somebody. And that are happy to be saved and just going to slide in by the skin of their teeth. But I'm going to write a book of remembrance of all those Christians that when they've got every right to throw in the towel, that they keep the towel in their pocket and they keep swinging and they keep batting and they keep running and they keep going forth and they keep trusting me. He said, I'm going to write a book. Boy, I read that and I got to thinking. I want to know, is your name in that book? Now, the Bible speaks of three different books, if you read, and I ain't got a whole lot of time to go into this. The Bible speaks, first of all, as of the book of life. This is found in Exodus chapter 32 when God is talking to Moses. God said, I'm going to destroy everybody on the, on the face of the earth again because I'm sick and tired of them rebelling against me. Moses said, if you're going to blot their name out of the book, Blot my name out of the book. So there's the book of life. That records every person that has ever been born. It is a book of life. The second book we find in Revelations, we find in Hebrews chapter 12, Revelations 20, and Luke chapter 10. It is called the Lamb's book of life. This is a book, whether it's liter literal or figurative or spiritual, I don't know. But there is a book that when you get born again, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your name is written in that book. John saw the book in the new city. He saw it at the great white throne judgment. The Bible says at the great white throne judgment that the books were opened. Not the book, the books were opened. So there's more than one. So you got the book of life, you got the Lamb's book of life, that when you get born again it records every one that has ever been born again and ever will be born again when they get born again except that their name is written in that book. But I found another book called the Book of Remembrance that is for Christian people that when you stay faithful and when you serve God when all those other people are quitting, and when you quote the scripture and when you fast and when you read your Bible, when you believe with everything and it don't turn out like you think it should, that you still are faithful to the house of God. You're still faithful to ministry. You're still faithful to Jehovah and trust Him and believe in Him. The Bible says there is a book that is standing before God that He remembers your works. Now, many writers in the New Testament write about your works. Paul, in particular, writes about your works. We also know that Abraham, in Genesis 15, 6, the Bible says, and he, speaking of Abraham, he believed the Lord, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. That word accounted means to write down or to record. So when Abraham believed God, God recorded him believing him and when he stood before God it became part of his reward and his righteousness. Good God Almighty. 
I want to know is your name. I know that you've been, you're alive. I mean, you're here and you're breathing. Everybody take a breath. Your name is in the book of life because you're alive. Most of you in here are born again. Hopefully all of us before we leave will be born again this morning. You've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you've been born again, just wave at me. Just wave at me. Your name is in the Lamb's book of life. I'm not talking about the book of life. I'm not talking about the Lamb's book of life. Thank God you're saved and born again. I want to know is your name in the book of remembrance. Is your name in the book? The book to where when things get hard, you stick your feet down in the ground and you bend down and you say come hell or high water I ain't moving on what God told me. God promised me and I'm going to stand let them come, let them go let the wind blow but I'm standing on God's word. Is your name in that book? Is your name in that book? Somebody say amen. Faithful. You know, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is like a man that had servants. And when his servants come before him, he gave them talents. And they went out and different, did different things with the talents. And some of them, one had five talents. And he come back and he doubled his talents. And the, and, and the king said, you've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you a rewarder over many. See, that's that press down, shaking together and running over. I want to know, is there something recorded in the book of remembrance that has your name by it? Good God Almighty. That's what I want to know. Thank God you're saved. Thank God you're going to heaven when you die. But is your name in that book? The book that you have done something for God. I know you're mad at me. Come on, somebody. Have you been faithful over anything? Or do you start things and then when the wind comes, oh, you get blown to the right or to the left. Are you a little piggy? That's what I want to know. Are you a little piggy that has built your house out of stubble? And when the big bad wolf comes and he huffs and puffs, has he blown your little old piggy house down? That's what I want to know because that's the way most Christians are. Are you that little piggy that has built your house out of rock? Out of stone. Built your house on the rock called Jesus Christ who is the Word. And in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh and dwelt among. Is your life built on the Word of God? So when that big bad old stinking wolf the Bible says he's like a roaring lion but we're going to call him a wolf this morning when he comes and you hear him do you not worry about it because you're founded on the rock I'm preaching better than y'all letting on somebody say amen is your name in that book are you just happy your name's in the land's book of life come on somebody I want my name. I want every time he turns a page, that's David. I didn't come to take part. I came to take over. Somebody say amen. I want my name. And you say, well, that ain't even godly. Tell Obed-Edom that it ain't godly. Because you remember when Solomon was building his temple and he was needing some ushers. Guess who signed up for it? Obed-Edom. And when he was needing musicians, guess whose name you find listed on there? Obed-Edom. And when he was needing some people to work outside the gates and the courts, guess whose name you found on the the list of of I will do it? Obed-Edom. He was on every list that you find when Solomon was building his temple. I want to be out through all the books. I want to be so much in that book that when God, I may be standing by God when you come to God. I might, I might be standing by. Cause my name in that book so many times. He said, he look, Big D. Is Mike House in there anywhere? And I said, God, I ain't got to look at the book. 
His name's in there. Good God Almighty. Big D. How about old Joy Swanger? Is her name in that book? I ain't even got to look in the book. Because I remember when Joy Swanger was diagnosed with cancer, terminal cancer, some 10, 12 years ago. And they gave her weeks and just a few months to live. And I remember Joy Swanger got, her, got right with God. Found the word of God where he says that I'm your healer. And by his stripes we are healed. And she hunkered down to that word. And she believed the report of God. Next thing you know she got around people that believed the report of God. And all of a sudden she stands here some 12, 13 years later. Healed, 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 healed by the power of God. I ain't even got to look in the book. I can say, yeah, her name's in the book. Y'all don't want to say nothing to me, but I feel like preaching up in here this morning. Big D, how about Big Jamie? Is Jamie's name in that book? I ain't even got to look in the book. Because I was there when Jamie broke his back in three places. I wasn't actually there, but I was in his life at that time. Wrestling. Thought he was some big man. Told him he was getting old. He was like 30-something. I mean, that ain't old, but you don't need to be out there wrestling. Thought he was wrestling number two with somebody. Broke his back in three places, had no Medicare, had no insurance, and for over a year couldn't even go to the doctor to get some Advil or some pain medication with his back broken in three spots. And every time I'd call him, he'd say, but I'm believing God to heal me. Still, today, has got a broken back. Doctors wanted to do surgery, said if you move the wrong way, you'll be paralyzed from your waist down. Still broke. Talked to him the other day. He said, here's what the doctor said. But I'm believing God. I ain't even got to look at the book. Big D, is his name in the book? Yeah, Lord, his name's in the book. Because he stayed faithful to what you told him. And in the midst of pain, he believed you. And in the midst of struggle, he trusted you. I ain't even got to look at the book because I know his name is in the book because he was faithful to you. Good God, I might be the book reader of heaven. Come on, somebody. Woo! Hallelujah. I want to know is your name in that book. Or every time something comes your way, we don't see you for three months. Mmm, Jesus. Well, I feel like preaching right there. Hallelujah. You do good for three weeks and then you're gone for three months. You do good for six months, and then you're gone for six years. You might be in the Lamb's Book of Life, but your name probably ain't in that book. I get nervous. My head starts itching in the back. Come on, somebody. Well, if you don't like this, don't come the rest of the month. Because starting, oh, you shut your mouth. You starting the, the week after next, next week, everybody raise your hand. Everybody with your hand raised, you're committing to God to be here next week. <laughs> there ain't nothing that gimps me up more than in getting a guest speaker to come and people lay out. You know what I'm saying? You should lay out two times when I preach. To come to the one time we bring somebody in. You know what I'm saying? Be here and be faithful. I don't want to come walking in the back door with Brother Dudley. I mean, anybody with the name Dudley, you got to want to come here preach. That's a preacher name. Me and Dudley come walking in, there's 12 people. Come on, somebody. Be here. Be faithful. That was my little commercial. But I'm on, I, I got a mandate from God to teach you how to get your name in that book right there. There are certain things you got to do and not do that will determine if you're going to endure to the end. Because we forget that scripture where it says those who endure to the end shall be saved. That's my old Pentecostal background coming back. <laughs> Y'all Baptist folk ain't going to like that one too good. <laughs> I'm just picking on you. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor right now and ask him, is your name in the book?
Yeah, I told you. But I've been known to lie. So you... I'm just playing. I, I got a whole bunch of keys. But I ain't even going to get into them. Can, can I do one? I don't even know what time it is. Can I do one? Let me, let me give you one key. And then we're going to pick this up in two weeks. Boy, it made me want to come hear myself preach. There's one key that, that will determine if your name going to be in that book right there. Now, there's more than one, but I'm just going to give you one. The Bible says that as all these other people were, were leaving God, forsaking Him, stopping to stop believing in Him, questioning Him, saying it's vain to serve God and all the sin, we're just going to go live like sinners. You know what I'm saying? Because we all, we all live in, you know, where all bad things happen to everybody. I might as well just go get drunk with them. At least it'll... Keep me from thinking about it for a couple of hours. At least I'll meet a new friend called the Ceramic God. Somebody say amen. And just go get drunk, dance, and party and act like an idiot. Come on, somebody. I sleep in on Sundays because it ain't doing me no good. All those things that y'all think that y'all don't want to pretend like y'all don't. But the, the, the Bible says that the carnal mind is the enmity of God. It is his enemy. So I know you think those things. My God, I, I, if I'm holier than you are, I think them. Somebody say amen. I'm just playing. I'm not. But you know what I'm saying. I think them. Sometimes I think, my God, I just, I just want to go smoke a joint or something. I'm just tired of all of it. If I could have three hours of peace where I sit on the couch going. And Stephanie get on to me because I hadn't trimmed the bushes. I just look at her and go. <laughs> and when Reagan's asking me 17,000 questions, I just look at her. <laughs> Baby, go get me some tater chips or something. <laughs> Could you get me a cracker? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Y'all don't like real preaching. Just real, real preaching. There's times I'm like. And if you think you don't, you're lying to yourself because I don't believe you. I don't believe you at all. No, I'm holy all the time. But yeah. You self-righteous is what you are, but you ain't fooling nobody. Amen. I'm telling you, we all think that. The, 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 the issue is, you can't allow those thoughts to become actions. You want to quit all you want as long as you don't. You want to act like an idiot all you want as long as you don't. And then you bring that thought back into captivity and say, no, I ain't going to smoke a joint. I believe I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost for about 30 minutes. And then when Stephanie gets on to me because I hate trying to push it, because I'm just drunk in the Holy Ghost then. Somebody say amen. And then the Holy Ghost gives me wisdom and kicks me in the fanny and says, you better get out there and trim them bushes. Somebody say amen. I'm going to give you one key, and then I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm done. You ready? The Bible said when all those people were acting crazy, that there was a group that feared God that oftentimes talked to each other. If you want your name in that book, you have to have godly influences in your life. you got to have friends that you can sit down See, now I got friends and I got, I got people in my life and, 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 and if, you're all, if you're holier than everybody in your life, you got problems. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got some people in my life that pray more than I do. And when, when, I, when my prayer life starts getting where it don't need to be or my life of prayer, my communication with God, I get around them jokers. 
Because they'll start saying, my God, I prayed for an hour and a half today. And I'm like, oh, God, heaven. <laughs> Jesus. I think I prayed when I was in the shower about five minutes. But I get around them, and then I get hungry. Next thing you know, the next morning, I done got up early praying. Because iron sharpens iron. You understand what I'm saying? You, you understand what I'm saying? If, if I'm dealing with my thought life, I'll get around people who have strong, strong thought life. Boy, that'll leak over into me, and it'll encourage me. If my faith is low, I'll call up somebody that's faith, faith, faith. Why? I don't want to call up somebody that's on the same page with me. I got to get, get, get somebody around me that's higher than me that can pull me up to where they are. Somebody say amen. Now, we don't get this kind of preaching because we think the preacher got it all going on. Somebody say amen. Well, I'm up here about an hour a week. That means however many hours I'm down there with y'all. But I, I got wisdom. I, 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 if, I'm, if my faith is weary, I won't, go get a, I won't go get around some of my friends because I know that they don't have faith. And they're going to just get right in that bandwagon with me. Next thing you know, we gonna, it ain't going to be pretty. You understand what I'm saying to you? This is just good, basic Real teaching right here. You got to have godly influences. Amen? Godly influences. If you're down and out, you can't go and hang out with people that are down and out. If you're broke, go get around somebody that's making money. Get around them. And next thing you know, boy, you'll be like, my God, I, I, I got to go make me some money. Somebody say Amen. Your faith is weary. Get around somebody that quotes Scripture and believes God in the midst of hell. Next thing you know, you'll be quoting Scripture and believing God. Amen. That's why you that just got saved last week and born again, don't go back to the same old friends at the same old club hanging out because you're going to end up the same old way. Find you somebody that will take you fishing or take you shopping at Kohl's or take you somewhere where, where you can get a difference in your life. Find somebody that oftentimes talks about the goodness of God and the faithfulness of Jehovah. Come on, somebody. People that I hang around with a lot know that I've been quoting one scripture. A lot of times we'll be in a conversation and, and maybe that conversation's leading the way it won't. I'll just say one thing. Ephesians 4.29. They don't even want to look at me. Because Ephesians 4.29 says, Let there therefore no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Somebody say amen. About the time I say Ephesians 4.29, next thing you know, we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about the good things about that person. It just takes one. Then all of a sudden you turn that ship and here you go. Godly influences are important. You that are new to our church, come see me and I'll hook you up with the right people. Somebody say amen. amen. It's not God's will that you hook up with everybody in the church. Somebody say amen. amen. You need to hook up with those that are going to bring you to a higher level. My God, I'm teaching good today. Somebody say amen. amen. Godly Influences. But I just love Bubba. Me and Bubba went to school together. Me and Bubba hung out together. We was in jail together. You and Bubba going to be back in jail together. You need to say, Bubba, you want to get born again? No, I ain't getting born again. Bubba, I love you. Thank God for you. I'm going to go over here and spend time with Jimmy. Jimmy living for God. Jimmy go to Covenant Connection Church. Jimmy, Jimmy got a good life. Somebody say amen. How many times do sinners draw the line and say, well, if you ain't going to go to the club, I'm going to find Bobby. But us Christians don't draw the line. We say, if you don't go to church with me, then you go hang out with Bubba. We don't do it because we don't want to offend anybody. You better start offending somebody. Amen. Offend them for good. Somebody say amen. I'm done. I'm preaching good this morning. Hallelujah. Is your name in the book? Are you faithful? Faithfulness don't come on the mountaintop. Faithfulness comes in the valley. Faithfulness comes when you got every right to throw in the towel. 
Do you stay committed? Committed. Faithful. Somebody say amen. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. My God, I feel like I could take on hell with a water pistol this morning. Somebody say amen. Glory. You know what? When they told me about that Lamb's Book of Life, I wanted my name in that book. I want to be born again when I stand before God. And he said, your name's there because you accepted my son Jesus. You live for him and he was your Lord and your Savior. I wanted my name in that book. Boy, all week since God gave me that revelation right there, all week. Hallelujah. I've been trying to get my name in that book. I'm telling you, get some goals about your life. Don't let anything stop you from them goals. Jesus told his disciples, get on the ship. We're going to the other side, the land of Gadaree. He said, I'm going to meet you. He went to pray. The Bible says that that a storm came and the disciples were about, their boat was being tossed to and fro. Jesus come walking on the water to them. Y'all remember the story? They was afraid they was going to die. What they forgot was what Jesus said. Jesus said, get on the boat. We're going to the other side. Amen. All they had to know is, well, this is just a storm. It may look bad. It may look concerning. But Jesus said, we're going to the other side. I may float in on a piece of wood, but I'm getting over there to the other side. Somebody say amen. Amen. God has spoke some things to your life. He's made some promises to you about your life. You know what the Bible says? When, 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 when Peter was being, being took to go to court, and, and you know that for 14 days they were in that tsunami. I preached this one time. The Bible says that they come floating in on broken pieces. Good God, I feel like preaching again. I don't care if I come in on a piece of log it's all about how you make it you may drive up in a Lamborghini and here I come on a longboard y'all know them things them jokers be getting now I may come in but don't laugh at me cause my longboard cause I got to the same place you got come on somebody it ain't about how you get there. It's just about getting there. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I feel us getting strong. Amen. Don't make fun of my board. It's all about making it. Isn't that good? And I say this to say this. Jesus, or the Lord told him, he said, he said, I'm going to write a remem- uh, book of remembrance. Remember? He said, there's going to come a time when I create my jewels. And he said, at that time, I'm going to remember the people in this book. And I'm going to send you back to judge between those that are righteous and those that are wicked. Many people think that that book in that time he's talking about is in eternity in the sweet by and by. I don't believe it because God himself separates the wicked and the righteous, the sheep and the wolves, right? I'll get into this next week or the next week. There comes a time when you get to a place in God where he looks down and there's a book. He looks that book of remembrance and he goes, they've been faithful. Now I'm going to bless them. Now, I'm going to move in their life. That's what he's talking about. And I believe we're coming into that place. And I believe you're coming into that place. Somebody say, somebody grab that for yourself. You're coming into that place. There's, hell, I feel that Holy Ghost. There are, just lift your hands to him right now. There are things that you've done for God that you have forgotten about. Holy Spirit just told me to tell you he hadn't forgotten. He's going to bless you on things that you've forgotten about. Hallelujah. Good.
good God Almighty. Father, with uplifted hands, we receive that this morning. We, we receive it as our own. In Jesus' name, may we be faithful, faithful to you. We receive your presence and your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need prayer this morning, we've got prayer and altar workers that want to pray with you. If not, you are.